Hello everybody, welcome to Stalls of Goggles. I'm Chris, also known as Retro Gaming Nerd, and... This episode's gonna take a little bit of explaining, so mind my tangent, but... I'm kinda surprised a lot of people don't know what the Satellaview is. I, I only come to this conclusion because... I've... Had a lot of friends just not know what it is. I've talked about it to people, and it's just something that... Just... Is odd. Now... It makes sense that people don't know about it, especially since it was a Japanese exclusive thing. But it's still kind of odd, right? So what the Satellaview was, for the people that don't know, is it was Nintendo's first attempt at kind of doing digital gaming back in 1995. Yeah, 1995. That's how old I am. That's crazy to think that Nintendo did it, and it seemed like it was successful to a degree. Now, how they did this was through satellites. And what it was is it allowed you to play games, well, single player games, and allowed you to explore Virtual City and other, many other contents. So, it's kind of weird to think that that was a thing back in the day. And why is all this important? Well, it's because today we're reviewing The Legend of Zelda BS. Which stands for broadcast, not, not what you think it does. Get, get your mind out of the gutter. We're going to review it and see if it's worth playing. So the story of BS Zelda is the same as the original Legend of Zelda. Ganon invades Hyrule for its Triforce. Zelda breaks the Triforce into pieces and hides it, and it's up to Link to find it. The only difference is Link has a deadline to do so. I'll explain that in the gameplay segment. I know that I commonly acknowledge that this is just a remake of Blank, but I feel like that's necessary when it comes to it being a remake, because there is no real difference to the story. There are some that do change the story, but this is not one of them. So with that being said, let's move on to the gameplay. This game is just definitely a remake of Zelda 1. The difference just boils down to time, literally. Each game is divided between one hour long weeks. Because back in the day, this is all you could do at the time. This whole game is only about four hours long, being divided up into one hour chunks, where the game should boot you out and autosave in between. Each hour brings a new set of timed events. There are buffs, debuffs, time events, and special boss encounters revolving around time. Take that as you will. In my honest opinion, I actually really do like the timed events due to the fact that they change up the Zelda 1 formula. It's not 100% the same game as the original, but also it is at the same time. I know it's weird to say. So, with that being said, let's move on to the presentation. The presentation on this game is just classic Zelda. But not the way you think. The game is the original Zelda game in 16-bit. More like A Link to the Past, which I like. I love seeing reintroductions of characters and monsters, especially monsters. It gives me a look at what a 16 Zelda would have looked like, even though a lot of monsters had been in the 16-bit era, which was in A Link to the Past. Since it is so straightforward, there's not much more I can say without just reviewing the original classic Zelda. So let's move on to the accessibility. There is none. Nintendo just doesn't acknowledge this game that I know of. And the last time they even referenced this to Teleview was when Chrono Cross was released which also had Radical Dreamers on it. Which, by the way, Radical Dreamer is the Satellaview game, not Chrono Cross, I just want to make that clear. As I said in the intro. Which means we have some way to play Satellaview games. So maybe there's hope, especially since Nintendo has an SNES emulator on the Switch, and they could just dump it there. Oh, and you know what would be really great is if they made it a timed exclusive, because we all love that. Or make us pay for it with the other Satellaview Zelda games. And if they release it physically, it'll sell out, and they won't even bother about restocking it. What? No, I'm still not butthurt about Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Why'd you ask? <sighs> Anyways, let's move on to the goods and the bads. This is a really good way to play Zelda 1, especially if you're someone like me who has played this game over and over again. The game looks nice, and it's also cool to have the original Zelda on the Super Nintendo. This game is a very faithful remake of Zelda 1. And with having the additions of being able to cycle through your items with the L and R button, that's a nice thing to have as well. Instead of having to go through your menu and click things, you could just cycle your items. The timed events are a good thing, but they can also be a double-edged sword. Which brings us to... There's not really much bad with this game. One of the bad things about this game is it depends on how you play it. The game can straight up crash between weeks, which would suck because you can't play it. And this game is already difficult to play. One of the issues with timed events is that you can beat dungeons too early. You will be stuck for the rest of an hour, if you finish up too early. And the shop will not change items until the end of the week. In other words, you can't progress if you go too fast. Another problem with the timed events is the fact that you can absolutely miss small events like getting the white sword. Or even the final boss. 
Now, I know that that's kind of part of the game, but there is absolutely no reason for Ganon to just not show up. Like, I think that that should be technically considered as a victory. Ganon was just late for something, I guess. I don't, I don't know why Ganon is timed. Like, I get it, like, Link could be too slow and he took over the world or whatever, but, like, I don't know. I just I just feel that it's weird that Ganon is too busy to show up. If you're not there on time, then you're just screwed, I guess. <laughs> so with all that being said, does BS Zelda hold up in a hypothetical kind of sense? Yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting way to play Zelda, and it'd be really nice for it to come back in a modern way. All the problems that are with this game could be fixed with either, you know, skipping or actually rewinding because Nintendo has ways to do this. I honestly don't know if they're going to release this game. I don't even think that they're going to do anything about it. It doesn't seem like Nintendo really cares about it, so tell a few days. But also probably because it is hard to get back to games. Just because we have Radical Dreamer doesn't mean it's easy to get them all back. Time will tell, though. With that being said, yeah, give this game a try. Hi hypothetically. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you guys next time on Assault Goggles.